The concept of dry or don't repeat yourself does not only apply to infrastructure as code. This concept can also be applied when dealing with large and complex AWS Lambda functions. So imagine you are working with several Lambda functions that are written in either Python, Node.js, or any supported language. And all of these Lambda functions share the same module dependencies. You can minimize the amount of code that you ship with your Lambda function if you take advantage of a service called AWS Lambda Layer to manage your dependencies. This service allows you to bundle and ship your main AWS Lambda function independently from your application dependencies and create a common and shared dependency reference across all your Lambda functions. Hello, my name is George and you're on Pogo Spot, a space where I show and tell practical examples and sample implementations on DevOps and cloud technology in general. In today's episode, I will look into setting up a Lambda layer to manage the module dependencies from a AWS Lambda function. So, let's start coding. When writing Python code or Node.js code, you will most definitely be needing to set up module dependencies, especially when the implementation that your application needs to perform is available in someone else's code. It's just a way to make things easier without having to reinvent the wheel. An inherent result of this approach is packaging of all these underlying dependencies with your code, which in turn result into a potentially large amount of code to ship. If the size of your compressed code shoots up to at least 50 megabytes, then you will not be able to deploy this as an AWS Lambda function. This is because AWS allows you to upload at most 50 megabytes of compressed code as AWS Lambda function. What you may not even realize is that you may potentially start creating several Lambda functions that have the same module dependencies, and then you end up shipping the same large packages to AWS Lambda function. This has direct effect on the cost you pay to use this service, especially on the aspect of storage. One way to address this situation is to leverage on Lambda layer when managing module dependencies on your Lambda function. To build up from where we left off on the previous episode, I will make all the necessary changes to move my Python module dependencies to a Lambda layer and then update my AWS Lambda function to use this Lambda layer. When I start updating my infrastructure, I will use GitOps with Atlantis, which I have completely set up in a separate episode, which you can access right here. To be able to deploy my infrastructure changes through a GitOps framework using my Atlantis service, I need to head to my VS Code terminal and create a new branch for my changes. Now let me head back to my VS Code Explorer and open my main.tf to start the work. At the end of this file, I will write the code for my Lambda layer version resource. This resource needs a layer name property. And I'm going to set this to Python core requirements. This resource also needs a compatible runtimes property, which accepts a list. And then I will add Python 3.9 in this list. This resource also needs a file name property. And this needs to point to the same output path that I set for my archive file data reference. 
So before I set the value for this property, let's head to my data.tf. This is the archive file that I want to reference, and it's called code. And I will use the output path property right here when setting up the file name property of my Lambda layer. So let's head back to my main.tf and update my file name property. I also need to add the source code hash property inside this resource. And I need to point the value for this property to the output base64 hash of my archive file data reference. Notice that the properties that I set inside this Lambda layer resource mainly point to the archive file that I created for my code, which we saw earlier. So let's head back to that data.tf. This data archive ships everything that is inside my scripts directory, which will include all my module dependencies plus my actual Lambda function. Technically, I only need to ship the module dependencies. So what I need to do is create a new data reference that contains only the libraries and modules generated when I run pip install against my Python requirements file. So, and to achieve this, I will duplicate this existing data reference block. And then I am going to change the arbitrary data reference name and call it dependencies. I will also change the source there such that it reads from that lib directory. And then change the output path to dependencies.zip. And because I changed the source directory property for my dependency archive file, I need to make sure that the Python libraries and module dependencies are dumped into the same directory when running pip install. So what I'm going to do is head to my main.tf. I need to update my null resource where I execute the pip install command. Which is right here. And then I need to update the local execution such that the target output of the pip install is dot lib instead of dot scripts. Keep in mind that when I run my Terraform commands locally, the run will create the lib directory and dump all my Python dependencies into this new directory. I don't want this new directory added to my git repository. So what I will do is head to my root git ignore file. And add the exclusion to the lib directory. And now I will head back to my Lambda layer resource in my main.tf. And update the references to the appropriate data archive file name. So in here, instead of code, I'm going to replace these two dependencies. And now that I have a Lambda layer that contains all my Python dependencies, how can I start using this with my Lambda function? So what I will do is head to my main Lambda function resource block.
And to consume the lambda layer resource, I will add a new property called layers, which accepts a list. And in the list, I will add a reference to the ARN property of my new lambda layer resource. And I think that is all the change that I need. So let me head to my VS Code terminal. And I want to run GitOps against my infrastructure changes. So what I will do is stage all my code changes. And then I will push this to my remote repository. And now let me switch to my browser and open the GitHub repository that I'm working on. And then I am going to raise a pull request as indicated right here. And then create pull request. As we saw last time, the Terraform plan is triggered automatically as indicated in the status checks in this pull request. In this status check section of the pull request, is a line item for Atlantis Black. And next to it is a link that says details. And if I go ahead and open that link, it will take me to a console log that shows the progress of running Terraform plan. And the process is done. The output is showing me all the infrastructure changes that will happen if I apply my changes. I'm happy with this change, so let me go back to my pull request. And in here, a new comment is added in the pull request showing the output of the Terraform plan. And if I want to go ahead and apply this change, I'm going to copy this and head all the way down to the comment section of this pull request and put that comment in. And just like what we saw when I triggered the plan, a new entry is added for the Atlantis apply. And next to it is also a details link. So let me go ahead and open that. And this time, this is going to show the logs for the Terraform apply process behind Atlantis. And now that that's done, let me head back to my pull request. And notice that a new comment is added which also contains the output of the Terraform apply. Now, let me head to my AWS web console. And then head to the Lambda service. And now I am going to open the Lambda function that's created by my infrastructure, which is called my first Lambda function. What you will notice is on the code section right here, I can now view the entire contents of my main Lambda function file. And this is because I no longer ship my module dependencies in my Lambda function. Instead, I'm taking advantage of the capabilities provided by Lambda layer to package my module dependencies and then allow me to ship my main Lambda function separately. And if I scroll down to the section of layers on this page, this section tells me that my Lambda function will be referencing the Lambda layer or layers, if you have more than one in here, to reference any module dependencies. And to get more information about this Lambda layer, we can expand this menu section on the left, 
head to layers and click on the lambda layer that you're interested in. On this page, you will have all the basic information about this lambda layer. Also on this page is this download button. This will allow you to download a compressed version of the file that contains all the modules and libraries that have been shipped as part of the Lambda layer. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore everything around AWS Lambda functions. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.